hello coffee here so i found some extra old art like extra extra going through one of my sd cards just of like i don't know probably 2000 i want to say 14 maybe 15 maybe 16 but um i did this sketch when i was in school and i never finished it so now we are going to go back and i'm going to recreate what I was looking to create back then and these are basically all my old OPTs so like the couples that I thought would be shipped best together. Uh, this first one I'm working on here is actually an original character of mine that is a combination of the two that I shipped from some actual shows. I actually ended up creating a whole story around these two characters called Humanity, and I've been working on it for like four years. So yeah, that was a huge ship of mine back. Well, I guess I it's technically not a ship. It would be more canon since I actually created it and it's not like fan art or anything. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so his name is Silver. Her name is Violet. He's got like some kind of shadow powers because I was just a cringy teenager when I created all of this, but I, I still kind of kept most of the stuff now. Um, they're just more like the powers are given to them by these stones, so they're not like supernatural or anything. They're just humans that end up together. And before you ask, yes, he is a little bit older and she is a little bit younger, but uh, nothing illegal. So <laughs> I was just one of those crazy kids that were into older men, as I'm sure you will see throughout the rest of these drawings. <laughs> I'm actually planning to put more content, um, original content from humanity up on my YouTube channel pretty soon here. I'm going to do some chapter readings from the actual book and accompany them with speed paint. So if you guys want to see that and like watch the development of the story and all that kind of stuff, I'll be making it into a sort of audiobook. So if you guys are interested, totally just um, keep updated, keep stopping by because that'll be happening in the next few weeks or so, I hope. Anyway, so over here we have Gold, Mr. Gold, and Bell from Once Upon a Time. And don't ask me why, but I was completely attracted to both Mr. Gold and Rumpelstiltskin. Uh, to, to clarify, when I first saw him, I was pretty repulsed, but um, after I kind of got used to his character in Once Upon a Time, uh, I, I started being more attracted to him because, I don't know, I'm just, I'm really for those guys that are just like kind of helpless. I don't know if you call it helpless or more misunderstood. I'm sure some of you get me out there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought him and Belle were just adorable from the start. When I saw their relationship starting to blossom, I couldn't even help myself. I had to like read up on them, I had to um, draw them all the time, and that kind of thing. <laughs> I found, I actually didn't find too many good fan fictions um, on Wattpad. I think this was like 2013 or so, uh, but when I'm, when I'm looking for fan fictions, I'm definitely looking for the explicit content. I am not reading for anything else. It is only that. So, uh, I don't know. It's not marked very well in uh, Wattpad. I mean, sometimes you can see if it's mature or not, but for the most part, like it's like 13 year old kids on there. And I was 13 too, yes, but I wanted to read the mature stuff. So I actually found most of the good content on DeviantArt. And I went there and I actually, funny story, I printed like a whole fan fiction out and I kept it in a binder to like revisit and like get inspiration from. And it was really funny. I, I told like, I lied to everybody else around me. I was like, oh yeah, I'm reading it for the vocabulary. Cause I mean, there was pretty good vocabulary words in there, but um, I wasn't. <laughs> Speaking of good vocabulary, if you ever needed to learn some new words, I would definitely go visit some Snape stories. Uh, I was a huge fangirl of Severus Snape, and I'd say he was one of my longest lasting um, obsessions. I, I obsessed over him. I mean, Harry Potter was the only thing I ever talked about, and Snape, Alan Rickman. Um, I loved his voice, I loved his nose, I loved how he was like a, a mysterious, dark, but misunderstood character. Basically everything about him drew me, but 
I didn't really attach myself to him until one day on a ranch I was going through an iPad, Google Images, and I happened upon him with Hermione Granger. And I like flipped my crack. I thought it was gross at first. I thought it was so nasty, but I got curious and I started looking up more images and that like I found that I related to her a lot and like putting me in her place and like shipping her with Severus and plus there's such a good intellectual fit in my opinion uh it was like a light bulb went on and I just dove hard into fan fiction into fan art I drew a lot of fan art myself I Writ I'd written a lot of fan fiction. Um, I learned a lot of good vocabulary and British slurs and like a lot of good stuff from that. So I don't regret getting into that fandom at all. And I um all of the stuff I was reading was she was like 17 or 18. So I mean in the wizarding world, uh, 17 is of age. So it was it was all it was all kosher. Okay. <laughs> I'd say when I'm looking for fan fictions, one of my biggest, like, biggest pet peeves is when the grammar is very poor or the storyline doesn't really fit the characters. Like, if, if you write about Snape and he's, like, on some bubbly trip, like, he's, like, so nice to everybody and he's just giving everybody compliments i'm just gonna shut the book i'm i'm not gonna look at it because snape is not like that i mean everybody's entitled to write the character how they like but i really love when they can get it like as close as possible to the original um character from the story because i don't know it's just it's way better to me um i learned i learned how to write snape uh pretty like, I guess, young into the fandom. Uh, I had a lot of compliments, just people like, oh wow, that's so like relatable. I started, I started a little uh, comment book, like, hey, place your comments below and Snape will answer them. And I kind of got pretty cocky about it. Uh, that was pretty fun. Anyway, back to Silver uh, and Violet. Violet was actually an extension of me in the original fan fictions that I was writing about Mr. Gold and my mom actually came in and told me uh, sh so she she always is looking to have me make things that will eventually make me money like passive income uh, so fan fan fiction fan art she was never really a big fan of since you really can't monetize that stuff because it's copyrighted unless you do it correctly but there's like a lot of things that you have to change and rules to go by so she's like hey why don't you just call this guy silver and i thought it was really similar at the time and silver had a lot of similarities to mr gold uh, but as time went on I developed so many differences between them and like added characteristics of Snape and just like different personality traits and stuff that they're completely different characters now like they don't even relate uh, they, they might look a little similar in appearance as far as like the longish hair and um, I guess stature but Silver's a little taller than Mr. Gold he also doesn't carry a cane and he's not he doesn't really have any cowardly um, personality traits like Mr. Gold does. I will admit when I first designed Silver, he had a dark side that was very closely replicated from Rumpelstiltskin, but that has even changed now and his, like I said before, his powers don't come from himself so he's not really magical. Now when I first created Violet, she was actually me in the original stories. Uh, I just wanted to be shipped with a character. I mean, who can blame me? <laughs> but I found that as I was like creating the sexier scenes, uh, I was having trouble because it was just really awkward like trying to write about myself and I was not the most uh, confident in my self image. So I created kind of like a perfect persona for me and that was Violet. And I guess she was my first like human Sona that I had ever illustrated. Uh, I had a lot of people tell me that she kind of looks like Violet from The Incredibles and no that was not the intention. Uh, her name went from like Anna to Donna to 
um, something else, like a couple other names, and then it finally ended at Violet, and it was like, it, I had no uh, forethought about making her Violet from The Incredible. She just has that kind of darker straight hair, and her name is Violet. That's like the only two things that are kind of similar in that case. But when I first was writing about her, she was actually uh, 14, I think, and she grew with me. So I made her age with me in order to keep it kosher. And I mean, technically, it wasn't okay for me at that age to illustrate myself with older men, but I mean, I didn't post this stuff anywhere. I was an odd little kid with odd fetishes, that's for sure. Probably had some daddy issues thrown in there. Uh, I actually, my dad left when I was around six years old and we kind of had some like stepdads after that but none of them were really like uh, very emotionally supportive to me um I our last uh stepdad was actually a bit of a bully he like constantly targeted me like he didn't like me drawing all day in my room called me fat lazy like a bunch of these different slurs like I, n I never I never picked fights with him either. I was just literally doing my own thing, minding my own business, and he would just come at me with all this bullshit. So that's probably where my quote unquote daddy issues stem from, is just the fact that I want a guy that's older in my life that would offer me emotional support, that would offer me like uh, stability, like financial stability and maybe protection. And that was really the biggest appeal to me is that like these guys know what they're doing because they've, they've been around for a while, you know? Anyway, so on to the next. Um, those were my old OPTs and compared to my new obs obsessions, I think I probably might have gotten greedier because I mean, if that's my old obsessions were these girls with these older guys well now i'm straight just shipping these older guys like i just w threw out the girls completely i just i want more men <laughs> this first couple here um is hannibal and will from the show hannibal that is now on netflix which i'm really excited that they just released this there because that means that they are probably coming out with a season four for the show, which I am like extremely pumped about. Uh, I gave him antlers because he's, okay, no spoilers intended, but if you're watching this, there's probably going to be spoilers for the show. Uh, he's depicted as a Wendigo, which if you don't know what a Wendigo is, it's a deer demon, essentially. Uh, he's also a cannibal, so there's that. That's why he's kind of holding the knife. Um, Will and Hannibal, I'd say, definitely have like a really toxic relationship, which I find extremely sexy. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know why we lean towards that, honestly. As as people who obsess over like relationships and stuff, we always run back to the bad boys when we really know we shouldn't be. But there's just something about that thrill of it, you know? I'd say as far as attraction goes, Will and Hannibal are both very attractive. Uh, I think, in my uh, opinion, Hannibal is the more attractive one, but that's just because I've always liked, you know, the darker, uh, more misunderstood character, and I, I don't know if he's necessarily misunderstood as much as he's just really mysterious. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next couple we have here is um, Crowley and Aziraphale from Good Omens, which I've watched the show probably a total of three times or four times already. I love it to pieces. It's really good. It's on Prime, um, but it's essentially about this angel and this demon who have to like save the world from ending, and it's, it's really funny, and it's cutesy, and they're definitely one of those like softer couples. There's not really much going on as far as like bad stuff happening. I mean, Crowley is a demon, but he's really nice, like a really nice demon. So there's, yeah, they have that going for them. Um, I'd say Aziraphale is prop, I mean, no, none of them are older than each other, but I know Michael Sheen is definitely older than David Tennant. So <laughs> I favor um, Aziraphale as the dominant one. But I know there's like huge arguments and all of that, but anyway. Um, so this last one I have here is two characters from the show Beastars, which is 
aired on Netflix a while back and it just gained so much popularity so quickly but it's really misunderstood by people who like kind of judge things outright like I know a lot of people judge the furry community very heavily and I made my sisters watch the show and they absolutely loved it uh, it's about this wolf this gray wolf who struggles in this um, it's like a community where predators and prey exist together and they're just trying to find like an equal ground but he almost like kills this bunny like almost eats her you know and then he kind of just like falls in love with her because he didn't get to and throughout the show he kind of struggles with like is it predatory instincts or like do I like her you know but I don't think she's really ever in danger of him eating her because he's really good at like concealing himself or containing himself I guess but it's an interesting concept for sure and it kind of uh, is a I think it's probably a metaphor for society in today's time there's just a lot of things that are easily relatable about like everything that goes on if you haven't seen it I definitely recommend you watch it if you like anime because it is animated it's like a it's a really nice animation actually some people diss it because of the 3d style but i really like it and so did all my sisters and everybody that i've recommended it to so also there is a manga that follows it that i've been reading and the art style is like very unique it's just really neat to read anyway so back to hannibal uh i think i've probably watched the show tw three times now i'm watching it a fourth time with my husband currently and it is pretty homoerotic like there's definitely hints that Hannibal is like kind of attracted to Will but a lot of people like to argue that it's a platonic relationship and he's more interested in him like as just a like an object something he can study something he can learn about or corrupt because like just try to get him to kill people and stuff see if, if he can mess up his mind I think to a point they're correct, but I know there's definitely some sort of affection between them uh, that happens towards the end of the series as they kind of learn each other more and kind of experience the same things. And uh, Will's like an empath, so he sees other people's point of view really well, and he can he can see Hannibal's point of view and Hannibal having someone understand him because he's a really lonely guy. I mean. He's a cannibal and a killer, and he really doesn't associate himself with many people. Just having a friend like Will is really nice for him, I guess. But anyway, that's my thoughts on them. Now back to Good Omens, Crowley and Aziraphale. Uh, so as you guys know, or I mentioned it, Crowley is actually played by David Tennant who I adore from his role in Doctor Who as the 10th Doctor, and I was totally all over that. Um, still, I think I'm re-watching the show now. I'm on the 11th Doctor currently, second season, with Amy and um, Rory still, which is amazing. I love them, they're such an iconic triplet duo, I guess. <laughs> but. Yes, I'm enjoying that. It's my second time watching the show. I'm finding some episodes that were like lost, I guess. Lost episodes, that's like a thing in the fandom right now. Uh, as far as Good Omens goes, there's only six episodes and one season. I don't know if they're going to make a second season, but I'm really hopeful for it because it, I mean, it ended on a good note, kind of a cliffhanger. So I know more could happen potentially in the show uh so at least keeps us occupied i have so much good omens merch i was so hardcore into that fandom when it came out like i even, i don't even like have really a reason um as far as like attraction to the two guys I, I mean they're just normal to me i mean they're pretty attractive but i just i thought they were more adorable together than like for me per se for like as as far as Will and Hannibal goes like I'm attracted heavily to both of them so but yeah for for the good omens characters I just thought they were so sweet together and I got like charms I got art books I 
was thinking about making a whole like fan comic on uh like as an alternate universe i had this big idea to do crowley as like a blind priest and and desiraphale as a nomadic a nomadic philanthropist is that what you call it someone who does good deeds and just kind of roams around but um i got most of the actual book finished but i never really made it past that phase it's it's still in writing it's i don't think it's going to be developed into a comic if i'm being honest i just don't have the time with that we can wrap this up and compare our two final products before we leave, I would like to clarify some things real quick. I can already see my comment section just blowing up, um, but as far as being 13 and writing fanfiction about older guys, especially the explicit kind, I believe it is within every developing child's best interest to write and read explicit fanfiction. Now hear me out. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into huge detail about this because I can do a whole nother video addressing this topic, but I see a lot of people out there who judge these kids for writing this stuff. They're not even thinking about the benefits of it, truly. One of the biggest things for me when I was that age, just like my hormones were developing, I don't know what, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I could have been out there with all of those guys trying to experiment at 14 years old because I mean I had I had it in me to go do that but I didn't I just I internalized it and I put it in my pen to paper and all of my biggest wildest fantasies were right there on the page I didn't get any STDs I didn't have to sacrifice my reputation like I'd say as long as you're really not like posting it at that age or I don't know like promoting it um that's okay like I don't know Wattpad or um Archive of Your Own I think you have to be a certain age to join Archive of Your Own but as long as you're marking it for explicit content and that it's obviously meant for people that are maybe 13 and older or 16 and older depending on your age while you're writing I think that's okay uh, just don't like don't bring it to school and show all your friends but I'd say one of the best benefits about this by far is that no one gets hurt because it's, it's in your mind it's on the page no one gets hurt and you can still express yourself because it's actually really, like, no one talked about it this, but it's really unhealthy to suppress these feelings as you're developing as a teenager and you're just becoming an adult and it's that really awkward middle stage and without an outlet, I mean, what are you expected to do, really? So I'd say it's definitely the best outlet for all of those hormones, for all of your creative energy. And yeah, I mean, if you don't agree, that's your opinion, and you're welcome to rant and rave about it in the comments, but it's not going to change my opinion, and I will still support everybody that does that and expresses themselves that way. Keeping in mind that older people writing about minors is not a good thing, obviously, um, or like role playing in that kind of way with with an older person and a minor that's not okay but if it if it's a minor writing about that stuff on their own time and it's just for their entertainment who can really judge that literally no one even okay i i hate to say this but even someone with those kind of fetishes who is older if they keep it to themselves and nobody is getting hurt we can't judge them as long as people don't act on those weird things i mean hey edgar Allan poe right he fantasized and fetishized like killing people for a living and he got famous he got famous from his writing. He never acted on any of his writing, but that was his outlet. That was li this is that's like literally the best example I can give here. Anyway, that will conclude this today. I hope you guys can take something away from this. Um, and I guess I it's partly me validating myself, kind of going on this tangent here. But if you enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell button. I will be posting more videos soon and got more to look forward to. Catch you guys later.
ไป